there's a lot of science out there that says coffee doesn't break the fast, but I'm kind of like, is that true? If I have almond milk in it, I don't, is it true? Is it not true? Do you know? <laughs> yes. So let's unpack that a little bit. I mean, it's like the funniest thing because these cultural memes of these rules, like I made some of these rules up basically. I remember like talking about a 36 hour fast and like that kind of just became a meme to like hit 36 hours. So why is coffee an interesting substance? Well, it's a caloric, meaning that it doesn't trigger a lot of the nutrient sensing pathways that you care about triggering or breaking a fast. And as you unpack the metabolism of how fasting works, it's what pathways in your body detects nutrients in your body. So there's mTOR, which is a protein insulin sensing pathway. And there's pathways to detect other substrates or other, other compounds. So in terms of degreeing levels of fast breaking, coffee is usually considered not breaking a fast because it doesn't trigger mTOR. There's no calories in it. So you're not getting any caloric intake. But for me, I think that cycling off of caffeine, giving your brain a break from just having constant adenosine blockers, which is what caffeine does, it blocks the tiredness neurotransmitter from binding to its neurotransmitter receiver. I don't necessarily think that it's a good thing to have constant caffeine consumption. So I actually recently cycled off of caffeine for over a month now. And that was because I thought, I felt like I was overdoing caffeine. I would have close to 400 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is like two, three, four cups of coffee and would get caffeine withdrawal headaches. I'm like, okay, do you need to be triggering emergency uh, levels of caffeine to just feel normal? I didn't like that. So I dialed back down mm. and we can talk about why it might not be good to just constantly drench your brain with uh, adenosine blockers because that would inversely upregulate adenosine receptors. So when you're off of caffeine, you're more sensitive to being tired. Do I want to be in that state? And that was inspired by some of my friends who are elite performers who are like, yeah, it sucks not have that boost, but I don't want to be out on, on a mission or in competition, don't have access to caffeine. Mm. And like, I'm just literally more sensitive to being tired because that little adenosine boost, I'm going to have much more receptors to pick that up. So that got me a little bit around adenosine or, or, or caffeine at the very least. But people talk about other sorts of crutches. I think caffeine is a good kind of entry point to get into fasting because caffeine is an appetite suppressant. It, it doesn't trigger mTOR in these nutrient sensing pathways. So I think it's a very reasonable thing to uh, start and push out your first calorie intake. But people play around with like fat coffees, right? Like butter and coffee or MCT and coffee. Right. And the reason why that doesn't necessarily break a fast is because fat doesn't trigger an insulin response or an mTOR response. So your body doesn't think it's, it's not sensing nutrient intake because in nature, you don't really eat fat by itself. You usually eat fat with like protein, which does trigger uh, that nutrient sensing pathway. So fat, sometimes people incorporate in because then they're a little bit more satiated. They don't feel as tired. Maybe it helps boost ketosis for incorporating MCT oil. So people consider it a fat bomb or a fat fast where it doesn't like break the fast in terms of mTOR insulin, but it obviously breaks the fast in terms of taking in calories. So right. you're no longer burning your stored fat. You're burning obviously this exogenous fat that you're intaking. And then people talk about bone broth, amino acids, Again, amino acids trigger some of the nutrient sensing pathways. So you can get quite specific and nuanced on what you consider breaking a fast or not a fast. To me, look, just a strict water fast, meaning just drinking water is going to be the best. Mm -hmm. And it's better to have some sort of fasting behavior. So if you really need the coffee or the bone broth or MCT oil coffee, great. It's better than just eating a breaking fruit loops in the morning in a donut. So hundred <laughs> percent. So it's all about what we can do. Get away from processed food. That's, that's certainly yeah. one thing in general. So it sounds like almond milk for sure breaks my fast. It's got mTOR. I would imagine there's, it's definitely yeah, it's a little caloric. Bit, it's, it, I mean, if you look at almond milk, it's basically bashed up almonds with some sugar in it. Yeah. I eat a, or I drink a four ingredient almond milk. We actually invested in this company. It's, it's basically just almonds, water. They add a little bit of date syrup and then sea salt and that's it. And so it's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's much cleaner than a lot of the stuff I see have canola oil or some weird, cause like the mouthfeel is off. 
Yeah. And uh, I don't, I don't like stuff like Oatly, which uh, has like canola oil in there. So you're drinking processed seed oil to make up for the fact that there's no fat, like normal, like actual milk fat. You're helping my investment by saying that. Thank you. Hey everyone. Thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.